Yay! Yay! All right, now we come to vectors, one of the most fundamental quantities in physics. Knowing how to manipulate them, do arithmetic on them, um, is something we're going to use basically every single unit from here on out. So uh, let's get a little bit of practice. Um, before we start, um, just do a little bit. This you may already know all of this, but let's let's go through it anyway. If I have a if I have a vector a and let's see up here I've got another vector b. If I just have these things written down, we'll we'll do the um, case with specific angles in just a second. But just generally, if I have these two vectors, um, there are some things that I can do with them. I can add them. I can subtract them. Uh, that's what we're going to do um, here uh, in this video. So if I want to subtract them, what I'm really asking for is, remember, subtraction is like difference. What's the difference between these two vectors? And the shorthand way of doing it um, just the graphical way of doing it is if I'm subtracting vectors I make them start in the same place and then all I do is complete the triangle there you go and the only th other thing I need is vectors are quantities with length and direction magnitude and direction so which way does it point um, a minus b always points towards the first thing. So A minus B would point towards A. So there we go. That's the vector A minus B. It's easy to do. Just have the vectors start at the same place and then uh, fill in the triangle. Just complete the triangle. What if I was adding the vectors together? Sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want to add them. So if I'm adding them, oops, I'm going to have the vector A. Um, what you do when you add them together is you don't make them start in the same place. You do one vector and then the other. That's kind of what addition kind of makes sense. If they're displacements, it's almost like you walk some direction at some angle and then you walk another direction, um, uh, another distance at some angle. So if I got A, then for addition, I'll put B at the end of A. And then all you do is you complete that triangle. You go from the very beginning to the very end. And that vector is a plus b neat so that's how you graphically add and subtract vectors now what i have here is um usually this is like alice and bob alice walks uh let's say five kilometers 30 degrees north of east sometimes these are cardinal directions so we could say that that's like east um, and then Bob, he walks three kilometers, 10 degrees to the west of north. We can call that north. So one thing we might ask is when they finish doing this, how far apart are Alice and Bob? So if I want to know how far apart they are, I mean, just from the diagram, what I'm really looking for is that distance, right? From the tips of those vectors. These, in, in this case, these vectors would be displacements, uh, going at a, a certain amount of distance at a certain angle. So I want to know the, the length of that vector. So isn't that vector, they're starting at the same place, right? And I'm filling in the triangle, so that vector looks to me like A minus B from what we just did down below. So what I really want is the magnitude. I want the length. Of that vector a minus b you could do b minus a right it's the same length doesn't make any difference um because length doesn't really have there, there's no minus length so it doesn't matter if it's a minus b or b minus a um i'll do a minus b okay so i want to subtract these two vectors how are you going to do it um always i'm going to say always when you do this you just want to get the components of the vector right off the bat uh, that's just something you're always going to want to do. So how do you get the components of a vector? Um, I'm going to suppose that you already know how to do this. So this will be a review. Remember, vectors have these components. Here is a y and a x. And just looking at the diagram, cosine. What is the cosine of that angle? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse has a length 
a of five. So this is going to be a x over a. So that means that a, oops, this means that a x is just a cosine 30, right? Um, and similarly, a y is a sine 30. Neat. Okay. Um, and by the way, here's how I'm going to write vectors. It turns out it doesn't make any difference how you write them. Uh, sometimes you might write them like this. You might say, uh, if you actually go through the math, you might say that the vector a is, uh, I've already calculated this out. This is going to be five times cosine 30. So it's going to be 4.33. And the x direction, sometimes we use i hat, right? To indicate the x direction. Um, plus, uh, and it looks like I got uh, five sine 30 is 2.5 j hat, right? That's one way to write the vector. Another way you could write it, which sometimes you'll see in books just to save space, is like 4.33. And 2.5, sometimes they'll put them in angle brackets. Um, and that's sort of understood to be components of a vector. What I do, because there's some value in doing this, but it doesn't make any difference how you do it. But I put them as a little column vector. So I'll write this as 4.33 and 2.5. So I'll write it like that. Okay, um, what is vector B, the components of vector B? Okay, well, we got to be a little bit careful. Um, B, look at that angle. Look at that 10 degree angle. That's a vertical angle, right? So you got to be a little bit careful. Here for B, what is the sine of 10 degrees? If you look at that thing, the sine of 10 degrees is going to be BX over B, right? So it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, like 90% of the time, the X component is going to involve cosine. But I've seen many times where people sort of get trapped into that without thinking. And it depends. It depends if it's a vertical angle or horizontal angle. Most of the time you have horizontal angles, but not all the time. So in this case, we have a vertical angle, so we got to be careful. So in this case, BX is B sine theta and BY is be cosine theta, right? So it's backwards. If it's a vertical angle, it's the other way around. And actually we have to be a little bit careful. Um, the X component is gonna be negative because it's going back to the left, right? That's in the negative X direction. So the way that I'm gonna write B, if you do minus B sine theta, uh, what you get is minus 0.52. And if you do the cosine of 10 degrees, you get 2.95 there we go they're the components of b so if you don't if you're not real confident with this um just keep practicing because separating a vector into its components is one of the most basic things that you'll do in physics over and over and over and over and over again all right but now we're all set now it's easy so if i want to do a minus b what do you do a minus b I just subtract the components. I do AX minus BX, right? So that looks like I'm gonna get 4.85, 4.33 minus a minus 0.52. And then 2.5 minus 2.95, uh, it looks like I'm gonna get a minus 0.45. There we go, that's the vector. That's the vector A minus B. Um, and when, when you get the components, look at it, see if it makes sense. The x component is positive because that's, I mean, for sure, the vector is pointing to the right. And then look, a minus b is pointing a little bit down, right? So the fact that you have minus 0.45 kind of makes sense. Okay, so that's the vector a minus b, and I want the length. But, but what I was after is how far apart are Alice and Bob after doing this. And so uh, the length, I forget how many lines I'm supposed to use. This is like the length of a minus b, the magnitude of it is going to be the square root of the x squared plus the y squared, right? Um, and if you do this, you get 4.87. And then if I want to know the angle, if I want to be able to tell them, okay, if you're going to go from one person to the other, what is that little angle right there? 
Um, so you'll say they're 4.87 kilometers apart. And then how do you get there? You go that little angle south of east. And what is that little angle? The little angle, remember, is the inverse tangent of the y over the x minus 0.45 over 4.85. And if you do that, what did I get? I got like minus 5.3 degrees. So, it, and that makes sense, right? It looks like a pretty tiny angle. So that's how you would get from one to the other. So notice you can add and subtract any number of vectors like this. All you do is you get the components first and then you add or subtract them. Cool. Um, so if they are um, displacements, this is one thing you can do. Um, another really common problem is maybe these are like forces. So maybe A, maybe Alice is pushing uh, with a certain amount of force in a certain direction. Bob is pushing with another force. And this thing, maybe there's a thing there at the center and you want it to remain motionless. So what you're gonna have to do is balance those forces, right? So they all sort of cancel out. So is there a force C uh, so that, let's write it down like this. Can we find some force C, Charlie, maybe, uh, where if you add all those forces together, you get nothing. And so if you, you know, if everyone's pushing with this on the one point, nothing happens. Um, well, yeah, we can find that. So C then is minus A plus B. So what are the components of the force that would cancel these other two forces out? Well, all you got to do is add these things together and put a minus sign out in front. So if you do that, what you're going to get is minus. And whenever I added these up, uh, I got uh, minus 3.81, and then it looks like, uh, what, 5.45. And so in vector, four, if, if I put the minus sign inside, minus 3.81 minus 5.45. And that makes sense too, because look, that has minus X and minus Y. So that's some C vector pointed down sort of that way. Uh, and it makes sense that that would sort of cancel everything out. Okay, so this is a vector arithmetic. Next, what we're going to do is the dot product and the cross product. Um, but this is so fundamental, getting a vector and its components and adding and subtracting is so fundamental, you'll see us um, do this over and over again as we go on.